Hey guys, it's Maddie again, and I'm excited to bring you another dig lesson and another Bible lesson today. Um, yeah, so we're learning about a chapter of the Bible called Psalm 23. And one thing that Psalm 23 says that sheep had to do was walk through valleys. Most of you might know what a valley is, but in case you don't, this is what a valley is. It's usually a low place in between two mountains, and it can be really dark and really scary. But even though the sheep had to walk through those dark and scary places, their shepherd was always with them, just like how God is always with us through hard times. So there's no human that can be with us all of the time, but God can be, God is. God is with us in hard times. Even if we feel sad or scared or lonely, God is with us. Let's find out what the Bible has to say about that today. We'll see how God is like a shepherd to the sheep in dark valleys. The Bible is one way that God shows us that he's here and he's here with us right now. So let's talk with him. Will you pray with me? Dear Lord, thank you that you are a good God. Thank you that you love us and that you carry us through hard times and that you don't let us suffer alone. Help us to hear lots of good things from your word today, Lord, and help us to learn from your teachings. And in your name we pray, amen. Alrighty, so let's start off today in a fun way. You can stand up and you can sing with me, um, and then we'll come back right here and learn more about God's word. I hope you had fun dancing and singing along um, and now we can get back into our lesson about Psalm 23. So today we're learning about how God is with us in hard times. Sometimes in the Bible hard times are compared to valleys like the one we talked about earlier. We've been learning how God is like a shepherd. Having a shepherd doesn't mean that we'll never face hard times and that we'll never have to walk through valleys, but it means that God is with us during those hard times. Let's listen to this. It's Psalm 23, verse four. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Since valleys are a good way of picturing going through hard times, let's write down some hard times kids like you guys might go through. 
They might be your own hard times or things that you think a friend is going through. For me, a hard time was when my best friend got really sick and had to be in the hospital. Other hard times might be, and we can write some of these down right here, maybe hard times are not seeing friends. Or maybe you could be fighting with your siblings. Or whatever else might be a hard time that you're going through. Alright. So you know, even though kids like you guys go through hard times today with stuff like this and even more, you guys aren't the first kids to go through hard times. Neither am I. Let's read about kids who had to go um, to Egypt through a long, or got out of Egypt through a long journey. Um, and God knew that it would be really hard and that they might have to turn back around, but it meant not becoming slaves again. So here's what happened. All right, this is Exodus 17 through 18. When Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them on a road through the Philistine country, though that was shorter. For God said, if they face war, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. So God led the people around by the desert road toward the Red Sea. The Israelites went up out of Egypt, armed for battle. God is with us in hard times. He was with the Israelites when they left Egypt, and he even led them away from a time that was hard um, to go on a longer path that would help them avoid the battle. Here's another way God was with them. This is Exodus 13, verses 21 through 22. By day the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud to guide them on their way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light so that they could travel by day or by night. Neither the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night left its place in front of the people. So, God was with the Israelites for 40 years as they wandered through the desert. This is a little cloud, like the pillar of cloud, as they wandered through the desert. There were definitely times that felt like a dark valley for them. Now, I want you to stand up and walk around the room, pretending you're walking through dark, scary valleys. As you walk, talk to God silently about the hard times that you might be going through. You can keep your eyes open while you pray so you can see where you're going. And we can take a few minutes to do that if you want. Awesome. Okay, we're going to move on a little bit, but if you want to do some of that later too, you are more than welcome. God is with us in hard times. Sometimes it can be hard to remember how God is there when things get really scary or really sad. Let's see how a boy named Brian saw God during hard times. This is Brian. He is 14 years old. Brian likes working with computers and spending time with his family and friends. Yay! Brian and his family have lived in a lot of places. I was born in Clearwater, Florida. Lived there for a little bit, then I moved to New Orleans, Louisiana. Then I moved to Las Vegas, then to Tallahassee, Tampa, and now I live in Colorado. Of all the places Brian has lived, he liked New Orleans the best. Favorite part about New Orleans was probably all the cool stuff we could do. We were really close to just about everything. We did a lot of trips and I really liked my house there. I lived in a big complex with my friends were below me, my friends were next to me, my friends were above me, my friends were across the street. It was great. Brian and his family didn't want to leave New Orleans, but they had to. Topping our news tonight, Hurricane Katrina strikes the coast of Louisiana. A hurricane is a big storm that um, comes around in a circle that goes over the water normally. It just brings a lot of rain and a lot of winds and it causes a lot of flooding. And you could see what was about to happen. There's dark clouds coming in, there's lightning coming in. I was like, eh, it's gonna be some rain. It's gonna be a lot of rain. So we're gonna leave, come back. 
No, it was not just rain. Winds, I think we had like 90 mile per hour winds. Now we lived right here in the bottom tip of Louisiana. This is Hurricane Katrina. You can see how big it is and it came in right towards my house, right by my home. We were on the couch in front of the TV watching the news and when the National Weather Service said, okay, an evacuation, you need to evacuate, you need to go, go, go. Evacuate means to leave an area immediately because of danger. I didn't really know that I was gonna lose everything, so we had, I just got a backpack, got some clothes, got a stuffed animal, got in the car, left. We saw water everywhere. There was no more neighborhood, it was, Big, it looked, in my eyes then, a big, dirty swimming pool, but it was really just a big flood. My parents kept praying. When we came back, we went to our old street, and there was not much house left. You drive down the street, and there's just house pieces. There's just a door in, the, in a tree. There was nothing left. I lost all of my stuff all my toys, all my books. Brian and his family needed to turn to God during this hard time. I think what gave me courage in that situation was my parents. They had really the courage from God. So really, it was from God to my parents to me, which really empowered me to keep going. There was one picture that I had of all my friends that I really did miss when it got um, destroyed, but they remade it for me, retook the picture for me and gave it back to me when I moved away. So I think that was really nice of them. Brian and his family knew God was with them, even through the hurricane. And Brian still knows God is with him when he's scared. I think storms are the things I'm most afraid of. Um, when I first hear the thunderstorm, um, I start to get a little shaky. I'm like, not very much, just a little bit. And I know it's coming. And then I keep thinking about it and thinking about it. And thinking about it. Reading the Bible and praying about it helps me get past it. God is with us in hard times. All right, and so I have a question to ask you guys about the video. How did you see God at work even though Brian had a hard time? Brian lost his home and all of his stuff. He had to move far away. He was really scared of the storm, but God kept Brian and his family safe from the storm and even helped Brian's friends remake the picture he lost. God is with us in hard times, so let's remember to keep looking for him. Let's say a prayer. Dear Lord, thank you that you are with us during hard times. Thank you that whether we're in a valley or not, you are there. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for joining me for this Bible lesson today. I hope it was fun. I hope you guys learned a lot. And now you can move on to the service, and we'll see you next week. Have a good week.
Good morning, friends and church family. We serve a God who is bigger than what we can even imagine, a God who fills the universe with his presence, and yet a God who is right here with us, a God who lives in our heart through the Holy Spirit. God is here with us this morning. He is with you this morning, and that is something that binds us all together. Even though we can't be together in, in space, God unites us as his family. So thanks for joining us this morning for worship. Uh, three weeks from today, uh, Samantha Frankhart, our Director of Student Ministries, will have a new name. She will be Samantha Ingalls. Uh, Sam is going to be marrying Tyler Ingalls, a fine young man, in three weeks. And uh, so we're very excited for you. It's going to take a little getting used to uh, uh, after uh, 30 years of Samantha Frankhart to get this down pat, but um, we'll have to change the greetings on all the phones and there'll be some work to do, but we are very happy happy for you and uh, we wish you and Tyler blessings and we're excited to see how God works through your marriage to, to bless his kingdom. At Ferrysburg Community Church, we are a community of people who are a community of all kinds of people who are becoming like Jesus. And we've identified in Jesus' life three different dimensions that he functioned and operated in. And the first one is one we simply call up. We see that Jesus had a relationship with his Father. And so we are doing things to help us grow closer to God. Samantha's going to tell you about one of those now. Yeah, so something that we have here at FCC for a way for us to grow closer to God is our Bible reading plan. So for the month of July, we're going to be looking at Proverbs. And so a really fun way that you can read along with us is there's 31 days in July and there are 31 Proverbs. So reading one proverb a day is one way that we want to just encourage you to grow closer to God. I, I had a, I worked with a guy who used to say, a proverb a day keeps the devil away. So I know I think actually Jesus keeps the devil away, but hey, a proverb a day doesn't, doesn't hurt either. So um, in addition to that, a way that you and your family can grow closer to God is through a weekly email that is being sent out by Lori Housecamp. Lori is our Children and Family Ministries Coordinator. And every Wednesday, she sends out an email filled with resources to help parents, nurse, nurture faith in their children. Um, that information is also on our website. If you go to fairiesburgchurch.com slash family dash resources, I believe, the link will be in the description of our video on YouTube. Um, you can find it there as well. So if you're not getting that and you'd like to receive it, send us an email. We'll put you on the list. You can go to our website, share it with uh, your, your kids and grandkids if that would help and bless them as well. Another aspect of Jesus' life is one we call in. Jesus had a spiritual family, and so we are a spiritual family, and we're working on growing deeper in that family. And so uh, that family includes uh, middle school and high school students. So Sam, tell us what's happening with our youth ministries. Yeah, this past week, it was a lot of fun. We got together here at FCC out on the back patio, and a group of us gathered together to worship, to study the Bible, and of course, to have s'mores. And it was just so great to be back together, but from six feet apart. <laughs> And speaking of being back together, um, hopefully you saw in the email that the plan is for us to resume in-person worship services on July 26th. So four weeks from today, we're looking forward to seeing some of you walk through these doors and enjoy worshiping together. Um, of course, there's going to be precautions. It won't be like the worship services that, that stopped in February and March. It will be different. Um, and so because of that, we know not all of you are going to feel comfortable or safe doing a worship gathering so we're going to be live streaming our services uh, on the internet so you can continue to watch our services on your device or your computer or your TV from home but July 26 and we'll have a lot more details and information for you in the coming weeks the final aspect of Jesus' life that we are looking at and, and identifying with is the outward dimension. Jesus came to announce the kingdom of God, and he did that by healing people. He did that by feeding people. And one of the ways that we do that, that we announce his kingdom, is through our food pantry. 
This week our pantry provided food for 18 individuals for, uh, for a week or more. Uh, we've got a faithful group of volunteers and uh, today and, and throughout this week you'll have an opportunity to contribute to our food pantry. Um, you can bring food items that are listed in our news page and you can drop them off right in here um, or you can simply make a donation to our food pantry and people will purchase food that we can then distribute. So um, that's one of the ways that we are announcing God's kingdom. So we read in Romans 6, Paul, through God, writes that we are no longer slaves to sin. We're no longer slaves to fear, but rather we are children of God. And so now we're going to enter into a time of worship and the praise team is going to lead us in singing this song. Um, so come celebrate with us.
Grace, mercy, and peace from God, our Heavenly Father, His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. One of the things that I miss about not being able to gather together is the opportunity to pray with all of you. I mean, we can certainly do that now. We can pray together in time, but there's something about praying together in space as well that, um, that is really powerful and, and that I miss. So I'm looking forward to being able to pray with all of you in the same space in, uh, in several weeks. But we're going to pray now. Um, and right now, uh, we're going to praise God for some things. Let's start with some good news. Um, first of all, Garrett Visser had another scan last week, and that scan came back with very good results. N no new areas of concern at all, and everything is stable. So we are praising God with the Vissers. Also, uh, Lauren and Jordan Coley I have been regular attenders of our church for several months. Lauren is actually one of the co-directors of our MOPS program here. They had a baby boy on June 11. Jacob Coley was born. Mother and child are doing well. And so we praise God along with the Coleys as well. So uh, we're going to be praising God for that. We're also going to be lifting up a number of people in our church family who are uh, in our extended church family who are nearing the end of their lives. We've got a number of people who are under hospice care right now. Um, one last thing we want to specifically mention uh, is what a difficult time this is for prisoners. Uh, people who are behind bars during this pandemic are really struggling. Our prison systems are not set up to function with social distancing during a pandemic. So we want to pray for prisoners, uh, for wardens and prison staff and other ministries that are being present like Humanity for Prisoners, uh, a ministry that we support here. So let's go to God and uh, lift up these things before him. Lord, we pray as your son Jesus taught us that your kingdom would come, that your will would be done here on earth the way that it's done in heaven. And Lord, we recognize that there is a huge discrepancy between uh, what we experience here on earth and your perfect presence and peace in heaven. Lord, there's so much violence in our world, and we ask that, that your peace would come into that violence, that your kingdom peace would come into this world of violence. Lord, we, we pray f uh, about the injustices in our world, um, whether it's related to... Um, to race, whether it's related to other inequities in our world. Lord, we pray that your mercy, that your perfect justice would come into our world and would set things right. May your kingdom come, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we pray for healing because we know there's no sickness in your presence in heaven. We think of those who are dealing with cancer. We think of Marilyn Dirks and Jennifer Longstreet and, and others part of and, and, and part of our extended church family. We ask that you would bring healing to them. We pray that, um, that you would protect them on, uh, as they receive treatment and, um, and live with this prospect always uh, present with them. Lord, we pray for those who are in need of healing. We think of Matt Mulder as he recovers from a very serious stroke. We ask that you would uh, give him a miraculous recovery and be with his family and John and Lisa as well during this time. Lord, we pray for Nolan Hawkins as he recovers from, um, from a hernia surgery. And we pray that you would heal him and, and protect his young life and, um, and be near to him. We pray for all those who are struggling uh, because of or with COVID-19. 
Lord, we pray that you would protect us. We pray that you would bring healing to those who have this and, um, and that you would um, be near to all those who are affected by it. And we especially think of our prisoner, people who are in prison. We think of those who are behind bars at a time when, um, when it is really challenging and the isolation only increases. Lord, we pray that you would be near to all the prisoners who are struggling during this time. Protect them. Lord, for those who have COVID, heal them. We pray for prison staff and for wardens as they make difficult decisions. And we pray that there would be um, both justice and mercy that is done uh, there in our prison system. And we think of Humanity for Prisoners and other ministries that are advocating and reaching out during this time. Give them strength and success in what they're doing for your kingdom as well. Lord, in your kingdom there is no death. And um, we know that even in the face of death here on this earth, we can rejoice that death has been defeated. Lord, we pray for those who are receiving care at, at the end of their life from hospice. Lord, we think of Leanne Harima and Elaine Kasuth. We think of others, uh, loved ones who are on hospice, Mary Retzma and Esther Chapkus and Elaine, Eileen Brussy. Lord, we pray that you'll be with them and their families as they await your perfect timing. Lord, we thank you for the ways in which we see your kingdom breaking into this world. We thank you for a good week for Nadia York as she's gained some weight and, and is doing better. We praise you uh, that you have protected Garrett Visser. We thank you for, um, for the protection you've given him and the healing you've brought into his life. That's your kingdom breaking into his life. And we thank you for, for new life, for uh, Jacob Coley. We praise you with Lauren and Jordan and the family and thank you for this powerful sign of your love and grace in our lives. Lord, we thank you that we too can be a part of your kingdom coming and we can do that by giving food to our community. We pray for our food pantry. We pray for the gifts we give now to support that ministry. And we thank you that in this simple act, we can announce your kingdom. So, Lord, we pray as you have led us. May your kingdom come and may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. This morning our offering will be uh, for the ministries of Ferrysburg Church. We're still doing ministry in our community. We're still doing ministry uh, through our church even though we haven't been able to gather. The special offering is for our food pantry. We've talked a little bit about them this morning. Uh, three ways you can give. Uh, you can send a check to church and if you'd like to give to the pantry, make sure you make a note of that on your check. Um, you can use our church app or you can go to our website and give there as well. So we thank you for your generosity toward God and toward his kingdom, especially during this time. Now we'd like to share a message with you from God's Word. Uh, we're in week three of our series on Paul's letter to the Colossians. And so uh, here's the message and we'll be back afterwards with some concluding thoughts and to wrap up. I'll tell you what kind of exercise program that I am waiting for someone to develop. It's a kind of, of workout regimen where you can gain strength and muscle mass and get into shape simply by praying. You can sit on the couch, maybe you go to your prayer closet, but all you have to do is pray. Maybe read a few chapters of the Bible from time to time. I mean, seriously, wouldn't this be great if you could lose weight by praying. You could lose weight by reading the Bible. Rather than Weight Watchers or a keto diet, you just pray and the pounds would melt off. That would be awesome. Well, if you are going to do some kind of a, of a fitness routine or you're trying to lose some weight, prayer certainly will help, but that alone is probably not going to do it. In addition to that, you're probably going to have to do some kind of workout or some kind of diet. But when it comes to becoming more spiritually healthy, those are the exact activities that produce the results that we're looking for in our lives. Prayer, reading the scriptures, and other spiritual disciplines. This morning in the passage we'll be looking at in our series on Colossians, Paul identifies four indicators of a healthy spiritual life. In fact, he calls this a life that pleases God. And I just want to clarify one thing right at the outset. You are already pleasing to God. 
God sent his son Jesus to live for you, to die for you, to rise again for you. You are pleasing to him. What Paul is getting at in our passage is aligning who we are in Christ with the way we live out our lives. Paul is encouraging us as people who are already pleasing to God to learn more and more how to live lives that are pleasing to God, to have that consistency, our lives being an expression of who we already are. All right, so we're going to read uh, Colossians chapter 1. We're going to be looking at verses 9 through 14. And uh, you can follow along with me as I read. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might so that you may have great endurance and patience and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. What I'd like you to do as, as we go through these four indicators of spiritual health is pay attention to the one that stands out to you, the one that's convicting to you, the one that makes you think, there's an area that I could use some growth in. I mean, of course, we could grow in all these areas, but which one stands out to you? So we're going to be focusing primarily on verses 10 through 12 as we talk through these. The first one is bearing fruit in every good work. So my friend and a member of our church family, Lee Ingersoll, uh, told me a story of when he used to play on the men's indoor soccer team. There was a group of guys a number of years ago from church who had an indoor uh, soccer team. And it was at a time in Lee's life when he was running marathons, so he was in fantastic shape. And uh, what he didn't have in soccer skills, he made up for with hustle. I mean, he had legs and lungs to burn. And so he was running all over the place out on the indoor soccer field. Well, one game, uh, his coach, the coach of the team, Tom Rayburn, pulled Lee aside and he said, Ingersoll, you're running all over the place out there and you're getting nothing done. So apparently, for all the hustle and for all the hard and good work that Lee was doing, it was not bearing fruit. His, his hard work was not contributing toward his team scoring a goal. He was not setting himself up to benefit his team and to be productive out there. It was a lot of good hard work, but it was not bearing fruit on the soccer pitch. People here in our church family are people with servant hearts. That's one thing I've been so blessed by. People here want to serve. They want to help. They want to do good work. Uh, the director of Love and Action stopped by our church this past week, and he said, I believe that per capita, Ferrysburg Community Church has more people involved at Love and Action than any other church in the Tri-Cities. And I'm proud of that. I'm not surprised by that, but I'm proud of the servant hearts that we have here in our church family. I don't think it's just a matter of you wanting to do a bunch of good works so that it will be a credit to your account. We're not just a bunch of do-gooders here. We want to do good work that has an impact. We want to move the needle. We want to make a difference. We want to do good works that truly bear fruit and advance God's kingdom here on earth. So if that's something that you're feeling, a desire to do good work that, that you know is meaningful and impactful, work that bears fruit, then I'd encourage you to give this a try over the next week or two. Begin each day by praying to God and asking Him to show you opportunities to do work that bears fruit and that has an impact. Now you have to pay attention. You pray this prayer, you have to pay attention to, to what opportunities are presented to you each day where, where you can do something that will bear fruit. Or perhaps you're, you're in a situation where you've got a decision to make. Two good opportunities 
that would be a great way to pray about which opportunity to take. Lord, show me which one will bear the most fruit for your kingdom. Area number two of a, a healthy spiritual life is growing in the knowledge of God. Now, the first century Greek culture, the culture that Paul was living in, was crawling with philosophies and clever ideas. Paul, um, in Acts, uh, in, when he was in Athens, we read there that the men of Athens used to just sit around and bat ideas back and forth all day long. That was sort of how they passed their time, was through philosophy. And so uh, it was a group of people in the first century, many people, who were looking for the secret to life. They were looking for that piece of information that would decode life for them, that would unlock the true meaning of life. And in many ways, we still look for that. We look for it in a Bob Dylan song, a self-help book, uh, a guru, the salon, the gym. We look for that secret piece of information that will unlock a full and meaningful life for us. But the greatest knowledge, when it comes to knowledge, the, the jackpot is knowledge of God. In Proverbs, in the Bible, we read that the fear of the Lord, the reverent knowledge of God, is the beginning of wisdom. The most important thing that you can know in your life is to know God. So if this is something that resonates with you, if you have a desire to know God more, here's an idea. We know God most fully and clearly through His Son, Jesus Christ. So how about reading a gospel? A gospel is an account of Jesus' life. It shares with us what we need to know about Jesus and therefore what we can know about God as well. Commit to reading the Gospel of Mark this week. It's the shortest of the Gospels. Or maybe commit to reading all four Gospels between now and the end of the summer. It will help you come to know God more deeply through His Son, Jesus. Number three, strengthened with God's power. You know, life for a first century person was not an easy one. I mean, so much of what we have today was not available in the first century. There was no electricity available. Um, there was very primitive medical care. Life was hard, and as a result, often people barely lived to see the age of 50. It was a tough life. And if you were a follower of Jesus, it was even more difficult. Because on top of all of that, you dealt with persecution, marginalization. In fact, your family potentially would disown you if you chose to follow Jesus. So God offers his strength and his power, but listen to why God offers it. Listen to the purpose behind it. In verse 11, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might so that you may have great endurance and patience, so that we might have great endurance and patience. You know, I think this could be our best testimony to the world. You know, often we think of doing good works as a testimony to the world. But maybe the most powerful testimony we can give is holding up under difficult circumstances and struggles because we have the power of God within us. When people look at us holding up, standing up under hardships, and they see in us a strength that, that we don't possess, they will see in us the strength of God and it will bring Him glory and it will be a testimony, a powerful witness to His strength. So if this is something you need, and I suppose on some level we all do, it's been a rough three months or so. If this is something that you need, God's strength for endurance, for something that you're facing or going through in your life right now, pray for it. Ask God for that power, for that strength to sustain you. And then pay attention. Who are the people that God is sending to you to be present in your life? What words of encouragement is God speaking to you through other people? What are the coincidences that are happening in your life that remind you God is with you and His strength is yours as you go through this? Fourth and finally, Paul identifies giving joyful thanks as another indicator of spiritual health. You know, there are a lot of things that can wreck your day. 
I can go on Facebook for like five minutes and it ruins my day. The stock market goes down and, and your day might be, might be ruined. Maybe you get in a, a fight with your spouse. Maybe you stub your toe as you're getting out of bed in the morning and it just casts a bad tone for your whole day. And in the, in the face of these kinds of circumstances, it can be really hard to live with gratitude, to live with that joyful gratitude. But there is a circumstance that as God's children, we live under every day. And under this circumstance, it is not hard to be grateful. It's knowing that we have an inheritance, an eternal life with God that cannot be taken away. Listen to how Paul puts it in verse 12. And giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. That is the predominant circumstance under which we live our lives. I think of it like this, like you're driving down the road in your car and your favorite song comes on the radio. And so you turn it up and you're driving and it's just taking you to a good place. And as you drive, because you're driving and because it's the radio, some static will break in from time to time. You might lose the, the high definition stereo signal. Um, you may go under an overpass and the signal will blink out for a minute. But the song comes back and it doesn't ruin the experience for you. The song still blesses you and gives you joy. Our inheritance is the song that's playing on the radio on the road through life. An eternal life with God becomes the, the theme song for our lives. And on this side of heaven, on this side of our inheritance, there's going to be static. There's going to be times when the signal gets dampened a bit, when it's not in high definition. There'll be times when maybe even we lose that signal for, for a split second. But the song remains. And when we pay attention to the song rather than the static, it is not hard to be grateful. It's not hard to be joyful. So if this is an area in your life where you feel like you need to grow and you want to invest in, one idea would be to simply journal three or four or five things each day that you're grateful to God for. Or ask a friend, say, hey, I'm going to text you some things at the end of every day or share it with your spouse. Develop a discipline of identifying the things that you're grateful for and thanking God for them. So which one of these is the convicting one for you? Which one of these stands out to you, grabs your attention, and, and, is, and, and calls you to invest in it? Pick one. And, and if you do this, here's something that won't happen. God will not be more pleased with you because you do this. He's already pleased with you. And if you choose not to do it, God won't be any less pleased with you. You are pleasing to Him. But if you choose to do this, your life will become more consistent with who you are in Christ. As you invest in yourself, the result will be a, healthy, a healthier spiritual life. You will become stronger and you will become more like Jesus. Our follow-up this morning is, is an easy one. This morning, we simply want you to choose an area of spiritual health that you're going to be focusing on and investing in. So, which area of spiritual health did you choose? And secondly, what are you going to do to invest in that one area? Um, when I think about these four areas, for me, it is giving joyful thanks. Um, the last few months have been challenging, and sometimes there's this temptation to focus on the hard parts, to focus on the things that aren't going the way that I hoped. Um, so I need to be focused on the good things that God is doing through this time. So that's what I'm going to choose to, to invest in. Um, and I am going to jot down at the end of each day uh, several things that I'm grateful for. And um, I'm going to trust God that he'll develop that mindset within me um, as we go forward. So talk as a family, share it with your spouse, call up a friend and let them know how you or her know how you're going to invest in your spiritual health this week. 
Well, thanks again for joining us. The service will be available online as soon as we're done here, and you can watch it uh, later if you need to. You can share it with a friend if you think that would encourage them. So as we wrap up, let's go to God in prayer. Lord, we're so thankful that you are willing to graciously work with us to make us more like your son, Jesus Christ. And as we focus and invest in one specific area of spiritual health, Lord, meet us there. Do more than, than we could even imagine. Grow us, change us. Make us more like your son, Jesus Christ. And we pray in his name, amen. And now God himself, the God of peace, will sanctify you, transform you through and through. Your whole spirit, soul, and body will be kept blameless until Jesus comes again. The one who calls us is faithful, and he will do it. Amen. Well, have a great week, and as you go into this week, you can know that God will be at work within you. Jesus.
Jesus is my plea.